the filthy animals. <laughs> How are my buddies over at the R2 Sonic Campfire doing today? Never Keep them warm. Well. Keep them warm. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> you guys should come. You're my good luck charm, man. I always catch fish with you guys. Is, <laughs> is there room on the bus? Because I look at you guys, and the, the eight or nine of you guys impressed me a lot. You know, because I first Stop ran it. <laughs> okay. Well, I, agree. You know. No, go on. You guys. Yeah. Um, I don't do advertising. You're not going to see me on billboards or in newspapers, classifieds, none of that. Well, yeah, there's that because, you know, you guys are awesome. But, uh. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's comforting to know in case I say something stupid. Now. No, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're like, you're hearing it. Real that's time. kind of our thing, so don't step on our turf. Yeah, come on, man. <laughs> oh, man, I hope I, I hope I don't. What we're saying is actually new, so uh, that's why we're fumbling a little bit. But it, it's going to sound amazing. Welcome back, everyone, to the Rutten River Pursuits podcast. Podcast. This is a Sonic Campfire, boys. We are Reality Outdoor Radio, where our mission is to get you outdoors by connecting you with the skills, people, and products you can trust. You can, you trust, can trust, them. Them. trust them all. I'm Steve. I'm Will. It's Bucky. This is Pick. Before oh, we get right into it, I want to hear a little bit more about this month's sponsor, Ryan. Right. Tell us about it. This episode is brought to you in part by Mountain Dew Kickstart. Yeah, it is. Uh Uh-huh. Mountain Dew Kickstart is a great tasting morning refreshment beverage. Don't you mean replenishment beverage? Uh, Maybe, but I know I get some refreshment from it. Yeah, well, I need that replenishment. Well, maybe we'll just agree to disagree. Mm -hmm. Or we just agree on the fact that it gives you both, bud. I, I I can totally get behind that. It also energizes you in the morning to provide you with that appropriate boost to start your day. Mm. Kickstart is a delicious combination of juice, caffeine, and Mountain Dew. All three. It's got them, bud. Triple threats. It sure is. It sure is. Hey, all those flavor options are out there, too. You got the pineapple, orange, mango, Mm -hmm. the black cherry, fruit punch, mango, lime. There's even a raspberry citrus, but guess what? I need to try that pineapple orange mango. It sounds delicious, but you got Stevie's favorite, of course, the orange citrus. Orange citrus. Those orange, the orange cans, cans. They're all full up in the fridge. <laughs> you got to reach. You have to wait around them yeah, to do. get to other things. To, but I usually end up just grabbing one because it's right there, bud. So, you know, if you want to start your morning off like the bad boy of podcasting, Mr. Steve Miser. I know I do. Just grab yourself a Mountain Dew Kickstart. And give your day a kickstart. <laughs> mm, delicious. <laughs> you know what I love just as much as kickstart? I don't I, know what, what that is. Oh, no. I, I love, is there in, something? In-house guests. And tonight, we've got a great one. No, they've all been great. Tonight, we have another great one. Is, is a better way to put add it. Add to the greatness. To add to the greatness. And if there's one thing I think all of us around the table love just as much being in the outdoors is get along with it what america outdoors. america <laughs> hey getting there how do we get there how do we get there to what the do we outdoors? get there in yes I, I i can't slow roll this anymore yeah, seriously. we've got mike cashman from mount zion off-road what? Yes, we in do. house you with can... us, and I'm, I'm you're right. I'm Stevie. tongue-tied, tickled pink, <laughs> excited about this. Thanks, guys. You're welcome. I'm, I'm totally pumped to be here. This oh. is cool to be in the studio, headset on, mic in front of you. This is fun. It's yeah, gonna be a good conversation. I, I'm, I'm so happy about it. We, we love our trucks, our SUVs, our Jeeps. Jeeps. Yeah, that's right. You yeah, name, that's right. You name it. Four it's, by fours. You guys, anything. You play this uh, podcast in the shop. We should. <laughs> maybe we will this to, one. Maybe we will this to, one, yeah. darn sure. Yeah. I think we're way overdue to talk about this because, you know, Will has the Ram, right? And and oh yeah. And what? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. With this, you know, the big tires. And a couple weeks ago, 
we were just remarking about how terribly loud those tires were. I can't, yeah, I, I I can't wait you. to get into this. This is no lie. I could hear them like 15 miles away. <laughs> yeah, whoa, I'm whoa, not whoa, exaggerating. Whoa, 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 yeah. It's your signature sound, man. <laughs> it was. <laughs> For a while. And <laughs> I couldn't, yeah, it was, it was getting to be too much. And, and it was it was like on a paved, like, regular road. It yeah. was like going down a dirt road. It was like, yeah. blah, 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 like you're rattling. A good set of tires or a bad set of tires. Can, what, is a make or break. Was that because, in, even though I've driven a 4x4, four four, but I have never got into those... T- the big di- ones. The bigger yeah. tires and whatnot. Is that because of the, and the we're tread not talking- pattern? Are, and like, are, and those, are those knobbies for 4x4s, four four, Mike? We're not is talking about like big, big tires. These are 35s, which are pretty kind of standard. Yeah. Right in the middle. Commuter. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, lift. the Hummer H2 comes with that size tire stock. Yeah, okay. yeah. But, but yours were terrible. Yeah, but why were they making that sound? Well, uh, they were making that sound because they probably were not rotated enough. Oh! oh what are you talking about? What? <laughs> <laughs> and what happens really? is, is the tires get cupped and choppy. Yeah. Especially no. on the front. And this is why it's really important <laughs> to rotate tires. Once they get yeah. choppy like that and, and the adjacent treads, one's thick, one's thin, and those things hit the road and they're just like... Like paddles. Wah, 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 yeah. Wah, wah. Yeah. Mike, yeah. It, I don't... You know, I'm not, I'm not going to do I don't like to throw people under the bus, so I'm not going to do it. <laughs> there may have guy. been a conversation about rotating tires a few months ago. But in... in not in my defense, but like that. In but this, in my defense, no. <laughs> but the tread itself lends itself to absolutely cupping. Like yes, we talked about that. I said, you know, how can I avoid this in the past, be, you know, or in the future? Yep. Um, beyond rotation. Yeah. You know, like there's different treads wear differently. Not. You oh know, yeah. Your mom's sedan isn't gonna do that. You know. Yeah. Sure. So Aggressive part- tires definitely can cup and feather a lot easier, and that's why it's important to rotate them. More frequently than than anything else, yeah. and and to use the right tire for the right application too. You know, a lot of people throw on just full out mud tires because they look awesome. Yes, they do. and then go to the mall, yeah, and, yeah. and never ever <laughs> use them in the dirt. Yeah, and it's just a, you know, it's like I get a lot of looks <clears throat> from the dude. cart boy at Giant. No <laughs> way, like right. he loves it. Yeah, right. He's like gives me a thumbs up, and I'm, yeah, so, bud, you know it. So where I, where I, we're going with this is you needed new tires because they weren't rotated, and where did you go? I did. I, I, I found a place to go that uh, they know a lot about tires yeah. for lifted trucks and uh I, so i did i called mount zion and i couldn't be happier dude you don't even know like, it's like a new truck vehicle is a completely different truck i want to ride in it again yeah oh it makes it we did the ridge grappler the yeah Nitto ridge grappler yeah that is the perfect tire for lifted trucks that want something that looks cool don't need a full aggressive mud terrain and, and, you know, maybe want something that looks more aggressive than an all terrain. Yeah. It's, it's kind of this hybrid mud tire, all terrain tire. And it's been really popular. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and so back to the other tire, when he says, or, you know, they're, they're telling me and your sales guys and your uh, mechanics, like everybody kind of had it. It was just nice, you know, because I got a lot of information mm-hmm. in a short amount of time. I, it was the first time I was there, first time I had any kind of service, yeah. and I felt like I could get any question answered pretty much at any time. I mean, they're all it's clacking like, away at the computers and like stuff like that. Like podcast brothers were there. <laughs> it, it was like, yeah. I, so, but they actually went and told me that when I'm driving, that tire will expand and it it's will, hot. It'll, sure. get, it'll touch the ground or the, the road at different points, and then when it's cool, it... You know, so like, so they educated it, you along the. Not only are they servicing, right, but you're gaining knowledge I at have the same a, time. You're a better person for having gone to this. I know exactly why we went with the Ridge Grappler because yeah. you know there's more tread hitting the road than than we're on those mud tires. Yep. You know because you have those big knobbies that are like, and then there's big gaps in between the tread. Yeah. So with the Ridge Grappler, like he, like he kind of said earlier, is there's a lot of tread hitting the road, but you still have that sidewall that's really ornate and fancy right. and mm-hmm. aggressive. So it looks like a super aggressive tire, but it really yeah. rides like a... It's pretty mild, like yeah. A like a street. Yep. Yep. Like a roadster. 
And when we're, t- when we're talking about uneven wear, just keep in mind that that only happens to tires that are on the front. And okay. that's why generally rear tires, as long as like <laughs> the truck's not twisted or anything weird, the rear tires so wear far, off. So far, so good. Nice. Pretty yeah. flat. Yeah. And that's the important part. Is that, be, is that because we're not turning? Exactly. Yeah. With, our, with our rear and, tires. And like as right. suspension travels up and down, that pattern of the tire that's hitting the road changes all the time. Right, in the right, front, right. especially on an independent front suspension. Yeah. And correct me if I'm wrong, there are a lot of adjustability with camber, caster, toe in that could get off kilter, if I, you will, or maladjusted as the life of the. I feel bad, but Pick on. is a big Jeep guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Tony, I mean, just, yeah, I thought I, it was, <laughs> I thought we had Tony Uri Jr. in the. Uh, I'm in, just kind of sitting back too. and then waiting I, to kind of interject. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Mike, we got Tony Uri Jr. in here too. <laughs> you know? I, I'm a Jeep guy at heart. Yeah, from the time I was a little kid, yeah. I, I remember my grandfather had one of those like woody Grand Wagoneers going Did to the hunting really? camp. Uh-huh. Yeah, I remember one time I was young and we were back at home and he said, "Young, yeah, well, what, you're like what." 35 now. Oh, man. 34. I was going to get, like, 14. <laughs> no. nah, he's, he's a baby hey, face. I, yeah, he's I a still, little guy. I can't yeah. grow a beard yet. Probably he's never a will. Young guy. He's not a little guy. He's, like, two bodies taller than I am. But <laughs> Two heads. Yeah, exactly. But get him home before his curfew. <laughs> <laughs> before his Jeep turns into a pumpkin. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. No, you're good. You're good. Just beating up our guest. Uh, no, hey, bring anyway. it on. Bring it on. I'm <laughs> a new guy. In another 15 years, you'll be glad somebody's calling you like a, a kid. Yeah. So what I was saying there about the uh, the Grand Wagoneer, I remember my grandfather, we had just gotten back from the camp a couple of days before, and he said, you know what? I forgot to turn the, the water off. Yeah. I was like, oh. He's like, well, you want to go back up for another day or two? So I remember, like, yeah. it was oh, just darn. Grandpa and I driving uh, the old wagon here up to Potter County. Uh, yeah. You know, staying a couple days, turning, like, shutting the camp down. They don't call that God's country for, like, shoots and shot doodles. Yeah. My first buck. Was I was just, just going to ask, can we, can we pause about Mount Zion for a moment no. to maybe get a hunting story in since he brought up Potter County? I had, like, a little interlude here. So, so I, I grew up hunting hunting with my father, my grandfather. Yeah. I remember Hunter Safety Course, went through all that stuff. And we were up in Potter County, and we were kind of in this valley. And I was at the top and just kind of sitting still. You know, you get out early in the morning, you right. just listening to all the leaves crackling, yeah, yeah. Tr- you know. And then I see on the other side of this hill, probably eye level, is this eight-point buck. And, you know, like right. the shakes start <laughs> happening, <laughs> and, you know, like <laughs> And, and everything's going crazy. Is he and, thinking uh, about me too? You're right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, I was shooting a Savage 3030 bolt action. No way. That, that my father and I bought at the hardware store. Oh, yes. Wow. Yep. This is PA. Talk, <laughs> yeah, that's dude. it. I love it. And, you write a uh, PA book. That's it. That, that that's in the first couple chapters. Yeah. Yeah. So you I read remember the script. shooting it. Uh, you know, kind of like getting a little disoriented. My father came back and he's like, what happened? I was like, well, you know, going a mile a minute. (laughs) And uh, we kind of sat there for a while and it came back out again. And my father put a shot in it. And then this thing started just sledding down the hill, right into the valley. And we we drug it out. And it was just like a, it was a cool story. How how old were you? Man, I was probably 14 yeah. 16 yeah. Okay, maybe cool. in that ballpark so yeah. it's been long enough now it's over 20 years yep um do you remember like do you have smells that you that remind you of that day like it, uh, anytime i back? shoot a, yeah, anytime i shoot a gun you know that smell of yes. just like like shell casing yeah. or brass on your fingers or yep. if you smell like a deer hide you know you just, just take it right back yeah. yeah yeah absolutely yeah. and and my father actually mounted that deer and it's oh, hanging awesome. in the living room Is it? so oh, it's cool oh, special great. every time i go over there i just think about Tag those team. times going you know potter yeah. county and all right Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So good story. Grandpa's so, a Jeep guy with an old Woody. Jeep. He's old Woody. He's legit. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. He's got well, street I, cred. I just well, he just talked about. He just can't say, oh yeah, Pap and I went up to Potter County and <laughs> then we. Hey, you want to go back for another couple of days? There's stories there. I yeah. I needed to hear one before we gotcha. moved on. So. Pap is a Jeep guy. So yep. let's get back into trucks again. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Fast forward it. <laughs> 
Thank you. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> as, a, as a young family, I kind of got into the Jeep thing. My father would buy wrecked Jeeps when I was young. Really? Fix them up, sell them. He would yeah. get like good deals on insurance wrecks and that like kind of stuff. Like CJs or, or Cherokees? Cherokees? Cherokees. Really? Cherokees, like the boxy ones. Yeah, I mean, they yeah, came yeah. out... In, and I in eighty four, and I live a, next door to the guy that does the Honda Civics. Why can't I get the Jeep? <laughs> Come on, <laughs> no offense, buddy. Case I got a good good car, good deal. But why couldn't I have the Jeep guy? Sorry, no. So uh, so I kind of grew up with that fixing up Jeeps, and yeah. of course, like as a young teen, I wanted to fix up a Wrangler. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I went through high school and fixed up a few, and I remember graduating high school. Our senior project, and my senior project was to buy a wrecked one fix it up and sell it for a profit. Right. And so I yeah. did that. This is not a stretch for you. For some people it is. <laughs> for you, I don't see it being a yeah, stretch. Yeah, it was a, yeah. I what mean, was it? It was what, a, that was one was a Renegade, a red Renegade, yeah. Wrangler Renegade. You know, really? the ones with the bulbous plastic yes. fenders. Yes, You yeah. know, rectangle the old headlines. style, whatever. It just, Big, like you said, big fenders, big everything. They were kind of like the redheaded stepchild yeah, yeah. of the Jeep Wrangler world. Like they were all plasticky. Wasn't that what Daisy Duke drove? No, she drove a CJ7. Oh, okay, that was, like, that was like okay, that was the yeah. real American. Oh, okay. That was okay. the Golden Eagle edition, right. one, the white oh, with the gold. Yeah. yeah, yep. I know my Daisy Duke vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> Darn right. So, so what'd you have to do? What did what did the Renegade mean? Uh, like the whole side was swiped off of it, so we put a fender on it, bumper. Hood, I remember. <laughs> I remember when we had it all stripped down. I kept it so I could still start it, and yeah. I would drive this thing around the neighborhood. <laughs> no hood, <laughs> no fenders, no grill. Yeah, it was cool. Just yeah. the, kind of the the engine hanging out, <laughs> yeah. looking like a, a seat. street ride. Yeah, or something. a yeah. seat, a I, steering column, <laughs> and four wheels. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But in Northern New York, I think that's kind of standard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you could say. Uh, sure. Did, did, were you able to get rid of it then after oh, you, yeah. you you fixed it? Were you? Yeah, I yeah. drove it for a few months and then we, you know, sold, sold it. it. it was that's cool. cool. Yeah. So you passed. I passed. Yeah. It worked. Yeah, it went well. And then then I went to school for business management and at uh, York College, and and kind of halfway through that, you know, it, it, there were teaching you a lot of big corporate business principles and it's right. all good, important stuff. Yeah. But my father and grandfather were both entrepreneurs and like, yeah. I felt a little disconnected from these small mom and pop things that I've grown up with to this, you know, corporate, you know, Lights HR yeah, and right, you know, yeah, all the yeah, stuff yeah, that you're sure. learning through college. And, yeah. and, uh, we started I didn't this- see HR, uh, the <laughs> HR department. No, right. Over. We're looking at it. <laughs> right. You're yeah, looking yeah. at it. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and the Mount Zion kind of grew out of that. It was, it was the grand experiment of mm. small business and, uh, starting a business while you're in college with your father is a really challenging thing, but a super Absolutely. rewarding thing. And, yeah. You know, so th- this is a great story of, Someone taking their of hobby. America. Here we go. Here we America. go again. Someone's was, got a hobby. I was grabbing my rust belt, showing Will like how <laughs> I jacked it was up your hernia. Yeah. With, with forgetting that right now because I am all on endorphins right now because <laughs> because this is the American dream. Absolutely. I've I was I'm not a business guy. I don't I'm not that I don't have that brain. I I don't trust myself. I I, I have a lot of not confidence. Situation. I'll tell you, Bucky has he, made someone else a lot of money. <laughs> and and sure. I so bad want to be, but I'm not capable of it. And I just have the utmost respect for entrepreneurs because and you're employing people then directly. Mm-hmm. You're, you're actually impacting lives. And, yeah. and, and, and that to me is hats off, Mike. You're, if you and have and you're making on. risk. And you're making risk. <laughs> you're sure. risking your house yeah for other people's ha- homes sure sure and, and man i'll get off the soapbox <laughs> yeah. and take off the rust belt well, sorry how, guys how long has mount zion been in existence how long is since the, uh the- june of 2004 okay wow yeah so 15 years i know so, it's yeah. insane wow. employing it's, it's individuals insane. and families yeah. for 15 yeah. years mm. you know the biggest thing about it is finding people good people yeah you know because yeah. Yeah. everybody that i work with at a day-to-day bi- you know, do things a lot better than I do them. You know, it's just finding uh-huh. that group of people that are passionate and that are that enjoy kind of the same the same thing that we do, and you know, just 
treat people well and fairly. Yeah, and, yeah. and it's just a pleasure to work with an awesome staff. How many people are at Mount Zion? We What's have the team? Uh, seven people. Okay. Yeah. Yep. That's a good that's a good number of people. It is. To yeah. Keep things rolling. I know it. Yeah. So, yeah. so what do you what do you offer? So what we wanted to talk about tonight <laughs> right. in, in particular, you know, what it's getting there is, yeah. is what can outdoorsmen do to get their vehicles, whether it's an SUV, whether it's a truck, whether it's a Jeep, whether it's a Honda Civic, is there anything that we can do to get our vehicles ready for like a typical PA mountain hunt? How can you help us with that might be fire roads it might sure. be a little parking yeah. off the road a road that somebody might uh, not have used just for a while a cleared or... portion of the woods that we you know because that that's a big and i do that a lot even just fishing you know in my right. car driving in places i shouldn't be the most important thing is to stay up on maintenance you know like to try and get here and say man i need to go to the hunt go hunt but you haven't done anything in the last year for your car or yeah. your four-wheel drive. I mean, it's huge. You know, like, mm, sure. stay on top of tire pressure. Check the oil level. You know, what? Make, make sure. It needs oil. Uh, uh. Yeah. <laughs> Run it till she blows. <laughs> is that why my diesel didn't land? <laughs> so, you know, that's that's the most important it's thing is, is, is care for that kind of stuff ahead mm, of time. You know, sure. as far as going off-road, man, there's so many different things that you can do depending on what you've got and what terrain you're in, you know, there's some simple things that you can do that really help in traction. One thing that we do when we go four wheel on a lot is let the air out of our tires. Yeah. Like you wouldn't yep. think dropping 10 pounds in your tire pressure would help, but man, putting that big footprint on the ground, just More gives you a surface lot area. Of, yeah. It gives you a lot of traction and you can do it and you don't have to Contact. spend any money to do yeah. it. Yeah. So yeah. how do you get it back? So if I'm, if I'm out in the middle of, I know a lot of guys will do that for fishing on the beach, you know, surf yes, fishing. Yeah. They let yep. the air out of their tires. How do you get the air back in it when I'm, when I got to drive, you know, 40 miles home? Yeah, there's two ways that most people do it. One is a little electric air compressor. Mm -hmm. You know, you yep. can either hook them to your battery, you can plug them in the cigarette lighter. It's a real simple, easy, renewable. Another one that we do a lot is a CO2 tank. Or sheets. Or sheets. <laughs> yeah. uh, so we'll do like a 10 pound or a 15 pound bottle. All right. And get a regulator for it. And you can fill up your tires. Man, you know, a big 35 inch tire, you could probably fill up all four tires half a dozen times. No, yeah. no way. Really? Out yeah. of a CO2 tank? Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the reason that is capable is CO2 takes up much less space as oxygen. So if you have that same tank of oxygen, right. it's not going to go nearly no. as far as CO2. Exactly. Correct? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And the CO2 will expand once you put Absolutely. it in your tire. Gotcha. Yep. yep. You can compress it down into the tank. All right. So there's All a company right. we deal with called Power Tank, and they sell a lot yep. of that stuff. There's other companies, too, that you can get. Power Tank's cool because they have an adjustable regulator, so you can adjust how much air... CO2 is coming out yeah. of the now, system. Now, can I take that tank back to your shop and have it reloaded, or is it per, and then it's it's throw One out? and done. No, no, no. You can take it yeah. to, like, a welding shop, uh, a lot of uh, beer distributors. Yeah. Fill, okay, gotcha. gotcha. Fill CO2. Gotcha, just like so, I would go to my local shop for my propane. Yes. There are places out right. there. Don't I, fill your tires with propane. No, no. <laughs> oh, Unless you're the Duke boys. Check your regs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, that keep them up with the theme here. <laughs> so yeah, tires are a huge deal. You know, making yeah. sure you've got good tread on there. You know, for inspection in Pennsylvania, the state minimum is two thirty seconds. That ain't much, but man, no. No. there's nothing yeah. left at two thirty no. seconds. I usually toss them at four thirty seconds because braking is just you can hardly stop. Technically, my t my tires weren't even close to being worn down. Right? No, no. you still had like a foot left. On. <laughs> that was the heartbreaker. Is it those yeah. that particular? Higher, I will know. You wasn't know, bald yet. It wasn't yeah. bald yet. <laughs> no. Yeah, you have to get educated. Yeah. You know, so I'm glad we're doing this. So keeping in that theme, if you've got a four wheel drive, check the four wheel drive before <laughs> you, before go, out you go out somewhere. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of things that can fail oh, yeah. in your four wheel drive system. Simple things like transfer case linkage mm -hmm. or vacuum motors that engage and disengage the transfer case. Right. You know, check them right. in. If you're if you have an older vehicle, check the lockouts, make sure that they turn. Right. So you can get it actually, in, you know, so you can engage the hubs. The hubs, yeah. You know, just some basic preventative stuff is is huge. And then you can you can definitely delve into that further if you want to get it, like, improvements. Yeah. You know, a lot of times an, an open differential is going to only give you power to one tire 
or it's going right. to it's going to you know shift it around to whatever tire has the least amount of traction. Mm -hmm. And you know, in the off road world, you want the tire that has the most amount of traction. So a limited slip is an awesome device that you can put inside the differential inside that pumpkin that's going to send power to the, the wheel that's slipping. So you can make that upgrade after. Well, yeah. Let's say for I didn't example, know you could. that's uh, yeah, yeah, totally. Let's say for example, I, someone I, has a, a stock 1985 Chevy K10. Yep. Just sitting in there behind yeah, their hypothetically, garage. Hypothetically, hypothetically, a buddy you know, of yours. It's brown, the beds all rusted. You know, <laughs> and it you know it has the normal just saying. The, the, just saying. The no stock guy. differential. You could put a limited slip differential upgrade Absolutely. into that. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, you pull the axle shafts out, take the ring gear off the differential and put in something better like one that we do a lot is a Detroit True Track. Yeah. It's an awesome limited yeah. slip. Yep. And one thing that's cool about it compared to other limited slips is it doesn't have any clutches. So nothing to actually wear out. There are these helical cut gears in there yeah. that work as a limited slip. So they right. last cool. and they work for a long time. So th really? this is a mechanical slip. I know a, a lot of manufacturers will say that, you know, it's a limited slip differential and it actually they, it pumps the the analog brakes or whatever on the oh, one sure. side to, to make this is right. an actual mechanical yes. solution to but that would work yeah that where you would apply they call it brake modulation yeah. in an open differential yeah i mean as long as if you locked one tire up with brakes i mean it can only the, send power to the yeah. other one yeah. if i was doing a lot of driving in the snow or snow plowing would this also be a practical application yeah for for that because i was just trying I, to take it off the off-road and I why else no would idea. i why else would i do, do this and i was thinking if I'm pushing a lot of snow and my I might have one side slip or another, that I think for the longevity it might be a lot healthier for your truck. Yep. Some guys like even the having the ability to have a full locker. So instead of a limited slip where it's gonna send power to one or the other, or sometimes both, this thing you push a button. Oftentimes it's either electric uh -huh. or air. Yeah. And it'll lock both. Did tires we just together. go upgrade? This is upgrade. Yeah. Oh, Cha ching yeah. 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 I was already like You were sold at the limited yeah. slip. Yeah. I was already, but wait, there's more. At X <laughs> at the XL. Now we're at XLT. I, I That's right. Wh yeah. when do we get to the King Ranch? Yeah. So so there's com there's companies like ARB and Eaton that make selectable lockers. Mm -hmm. And those work at the push of a button. Cool. Yeah. And Pick you can, are you locked out at a my first CJ was a seven. It was an Those 83. Multiple CJs. I had what they called the, <laughs> the lunchbox locker. Oh, sure. Yeah, right. Made by Lockwright. Yeah. And so I pulled the spider gears and stuck that thing in there. And um, I, I, I off-road and wheeled that thing for years before I upgraded axle. So, yeah, I, I'm... The Lockwright's great and yeah. inexpensive. Yeah. But they're like... You got to use them. They kind of ratchet and bang. Yeah, they and do. They're a little unpredictable. Yeah. yeah. But, that, I mean, for... What do you spend on it? 200 bucks? Yeah. And, like, you don't need any professional mechanics to install the it. Best bang for your buck, yeah. yeah. Uh, currently, right now, the Jeep that I have is a uh, JK. It's a 2007. It happens to be the Rubicon model. So it came from the factory with that electric push-button locker that I can lock the front and the rear in. You can and, lock uh, them both. It's not, yeah. You can lock it's, them both. It's nice. Whoa. It is nice. Real yeah. quick. You, you talked about the factory. What are those new Jeeps that I'm seeing, guys? The Gladiator? With the, with like the a truck? Up. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Because I might, I'm in the market for the, in the next couple of oh, years my wife to, get, it. to get yeah. me a truck. They're going to release a diesel one soon. What? Yeah. Uh, right? <laughs> if it wasn't for the cost of diesel. Uh, yeah, I know, but still. You can have it for 300,000 <laughs> miles. Yeah, You're is it going to be a five cylinder? But my truck cylinder? rusted you know, out it'll before be a I even got to two hundred thousand. Okay, okay, that's the problem anymore, Dick. Yeah. Is what? they don't make the steel well enough lately. Like my truck rusted yeah. out before yeah. the engine gave out, and yeah. I wasn't even near the life of that diesel. Yeah, and that's why I think you see a lot of the vehicles that are either aluminum or alloy. Yeah. So there's a lot of pieces on the new Jeeps that are an alloy. You know, and like the new F 150s, goodness, the whole thing's like aluminum. either an alloy or an aluminum. I mean, yeah. so we'll, we'll have to see how I mean, they corrode. So they're time. called a gladiator, the gladiator, yeah. And that I, came out of the 60s. The Jeep yeah, had a gladiator they used truck, to, yeah. They used to have an older one, and, uh, and I saw one on the road. I'm like, wait a minute, did this that guy have a no? That's brand new, yeah. <laughs> they're so awesome, yeah. Mm. I love it. They come in one bed length, one cab configuration. If you want a gladiator. 
this is the only That's way to the buy one you're it. So it's very like utilitarian. Like yeah. it's there's not it's classic. Yeah, I, but I mean, it still has like navigational other seats. Oh, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. So so it's not your average. Yeah, they're you know. great. They're great. The Rubicon versions come with 33 inch tires on them. Stock. Stock. Yeah. A, a front sway bar that can disconnect. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's got and just so many cool features. And correct me if I'm wrong, the differential also has the lower gears. I don't know if they're still putting the 410. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. So the Gladiators are totally cool. And, and how yeah. long's the bet on this thing? Uh, I don't know, probably like two feet. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. I, I think it's, oh, no, it's no, not. No, it's bigger than that. Than that. You can long. fit a dirt bike in it. Yeah. And, so. and they do they make, and there's, you said the Rubicon, is that what they mean? A, a Jeep term for a quad cab? No, no. Rubicon just is like a drivetrain upgrade. Yeah. Okay, yeah. bigger, burlier, like axles. a Raptor. Okay, yeah, right. like so an F one fifty and like the Raptor, an, like an yeah. off road package type. Exactly. Of, uh, okay, yeah. do they make th- these gladiators with a quad? Because yeah, they're all quad cap. That is the only configuration. My people, thank you very much. Because that's all I need to know. Because Rutten River Pursuits, <laughs> we're more than just a couple of guys. Usually, if we do anything, we need. At least four more guys, seats. Yeah. Yeah. more seats. So, so they they use <laughs> good all to know. the they use the four doors off the Wrangler, the four door Wrangler. Okay, to make this. slap a bed on it. Yeah, slap a bed on it. Yeah, man, can you imagine if you could get it like a hard top shell and then throw a camper? Oh, guys are doing it. Do, oh my yeah. gosh, guys are Hellcat swapping them. Yeah, no. unbelievable. Yeah. Really, what? seven seven hundred oh horsepower, bucket. right? <laughs> In that little, little Jeep machine. And that thing's got like an over 7,000 pound towing capacity. Yeah, yeah. It's really pretty I awesome. I was just looking yeah. at, at one last we were talking about, and there was a picture of one towing a, you know, a, a gigantic uh, Airstream camper. And I think, 7, I, think I might have a new little interest oh, to keep man. an eye on over keep the next year. Yeah. yeah. Pit, so right now, the, in that the one. SEMA show is going on in Vegas, which is like a big I deal just saw that. Yeah. in the off-road, in the automotive customization world. And, and they're calling this the year of the Gladiator because... Everybody who's Everybody. anybody's got a gladiator all decked out. Do you in think their Russell Crowe has one? Yeah. <laughs> of yeah. course he does. Yeah. Do you think anybody's wrapped theirs yet? Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to buy a black one and use orange and white. Careful oh. what you commit to, Buck. We'll oh, I, you to I'm it. all yeah. about it. You'll probably be able to buy an orange one soon. Jeep's coming out yeah. with all these crazy colors. Yeah. yeah. Pick, do you have the differential, the unlocking sway bar? Sway, sway, bar. Yeah. sway bar disconnect. Yeah, the, the Rubicon, even in two thousand, my Jeep is a four door. It's an unlimited. It is a 2007 model, so it's not new, but still back then, that model year did have in the included in the Rubicon package the four to one in the transfer case, the 410 gears, the electronic sway bar, yeah. which disconnects, which when you go off road and you get in a ridge or a rut, what happens is one tire picks up yeah, yeah. off of the ground and you lose traction of that tire. You want all four tires on the ground as much as you possibly can. Well, when you disconnect that sway bar, that will allow that axle to articulate yeah. and actually stay on the ground and have all four tires. Uh, I do have the lockers front and rear. So even a 2007 model as Rubicon, it has all those off-road options. That was the first year. That was the first year uh, of the you could four get a Rubicon with the sway bar disconnect. Stevie, yeah. does your Accord do that? It does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he took the sway bar off. Yeah, it's an aftermarket, my, though, bud, on that car. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's an aftermarket feature. But he got it. He, he rammed it in there. We talked a little bit about, you know, keeping up with your four-wheel drive. We talked a little bit about suspension. What, what about engine performance? Is there anything... Keep good oil in it, yeah. you know. I mean, that's the that's the biggest thing. There's all sorts of modifications. What's good that, oil? I like full synthetic AMS oil. I mean, that's yeah. what I run in my stuff. They're nice filters, and you can do long interval changes, which like, is cool. What's normally a long interval change for a full synthetic? Like ten thousand. So 15, in my 000? in my dad's diesel, Five, AMS oil seven. has this infinite by, bypass system. That they're saying they're they have these two giant can filters, right? And they say that with these two filters, you could never change the oil Jeez. as long as you're doing frequent filter changes. Filter changes because it's it's filtering out all all the particles from. The I oil. need one of this. That's incredible. <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. yeah, but you still got to check is, your oil level right, because yeah. it's leaking or burning. Well, you could still run out of oil, and then after time, filters are going to soak up a certain amount of oil, sure. and then over time. They also recommend doing oil analysis. I mean, there's kind of, it's not like the easy way out, but it, it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool because 
man, they, they can tell from that oil analysis what's going on in your yeah. engine. Yeah. yeah. Wow. How much life is left or if any life is yeah. left. Yeah. We did it from new. Yeah. He bought a, a brand new Dodge Ram 2500 with the diesel in it. And, and right as soon as we got it, put that on. It was wow, pretty cool. Awesome. What's that yeah. set of dude back? I don't know. I don't remember. I think it was a $500 kit. Yeah. Yeah. Is that the 6.7? But no, they, it was a 5.9. Five, five, the 6.7 oh, okay. came out halfway through 07. Okay. What so you, year is his truck? His was an 06. 06. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I have I have an 03. Okay, yeah. yeah so I have the 24 valve. 24 comments. valve, yeah. yeah. So yeah. He, he's since sold the 06 and now bought this old 02. <laughs> <laughs> We're so you much you a go little karate in the garage oh, after yeah. this podcast, yeah. boys. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to talk four links and triangulations oh, a little bit later. Gosh. <laughs> So one thing that's important too that we didn't really color very is in your bed, right? Like most people hunt, yeah. And just you know, one thing that we do I is like we're, my beds queen size, yeah. <laughs> Water beds. <laughs> <laughs> so so we are a Rhino Linings dealer, and we Sweet. spray two or three brand new trucks every day with Rhino Lining in the bed. Wow. Um, so it's a really cool process. It's neat to watch. It's it's nothing that you could duplicate with a DIY at home no. kit. No, I mean, it's it's incredible to see the process and how it happens. And mm-hmm. we're going to put we're going to put some YouTube videos out on each year make model truck and what the process is cool. and how we rhino line cool. it. Cool. A good buddy of ours Brandon, the photographer guy, yeah. just got yeah, he got a Toyota Tundra and that's what we were doing today. We were dropping that off for yeah. the Rhino Liner. So. Yeah, we're going to spray it tomorrow. I'm cool. so excited. Cool. For that. Yeah. I'm excited for him. I'm excited for the truck. Like That's awesome. So, so what does that do? Aftermarket yeah. truck stuff gets me jacked up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it keeps stuff from sliding around in your bed, uh-huh. and it also really helps to strengthen and improve the rigidity of the it bed. Does. It's incredible. We were making these like sample pieces out of thin sheets of aluminum, like aluminum that you could, you know, hold in like, Wiggle yeah. and it yeah. would yeah. shake. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. yeah. And so we had them sprayed with Rhino. And when we got back, like you could hardly bend this plate. No kidding. Wow. It was incredible. So how, how thick of a layer goes down in the bed then, roughly? Usually we spray the f- the floor of the truck at about three sixteenths of an inch. Okay. Wow. That the sidewall is a- about eighth of an inch. Okay. That's uh it's thick. That's yeah. thick. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. That's thicker than a bed liner. Oh yeah. Way thicker than a bed liner. And the, the best part is is it adheres directly to the factory paint. So there's no way to trap moisture yeah, yeah. or dirt. It doesn't flake off. No. Yeah. Yeah. Is that is so that stuff it, easy to clean? Yeah. Is it I mean I had it on the outside of my Jeep and it, it like got it on the outside of your Jeep. Yeah. And like I'd rub trees with it and it would just saw through the bark. It was kind of (laughs) crazy. Yep. Is it, so is literally just a spray on whatever, like, like you don't have to like rough up the meadow or anything. You do. Yeah. We definitely abrade the factory surface. We use a, uh, like a, a big DeWalt grinder with this bristly fiberglass wheel on it. To create more of a surface area. Exactly. To create more of a surface area. To fine too. So we just scuff it. And yeah. wipe it with acetone. Yeah. Gotcha. Cool. So you pretty much gave me a big negatory on my next question. And what I think would be, a, if you could do this and patent this, I, the next talk it's about. It's already done, bud. Undercoat with that stuff. Oh. It's too, it, it, it's not it, a great undercoat. <clears throat> I would think if you could encapsulate a bed or encapsulate the, yes. the runners. I had an F-250. I love the truck, and I'm. Bitter. I loved it too. I'm it was bitter about it because it, it just big, it rusted. Yeah, and 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 I'm like, is it? Should I've washed it more during yes. the winter? My, <laughs> yes. My mechanic says, you know what? I've seen these people. Guys have told me on these Fords. Um, that they've channels they, under the bed. They've right washed it. There's guys that don't. There's guys that do. The manufacturer's I'm, getting smarter and better, though. I mean, <laughs> you can see it where I'm at. Mm-hmm. Just the how technology changes and how they apply it in vehicles from HVAC systems yeah. to how things are made. Yeah. You can see that a truck that was made in the early 2000s is very, very, very different than a vehicle made now. So, right, right. you know, they're definitely learning. And that's why we're seeing vehicles that are I alloys they, or aluminum. They want them yeah. to rot away. They yeah. sell another planned, truck. Sooner. Planned obsolescence. They, yeah. they did it's the, smart. It's great. Capitalism. I'm, right. I'm, I'm, I'm my own victim. <laughs> what year was your truck, though? That was a two. Well, that was a two thousand four. No, two thousand four. Two thousand four. Yeah. 
I think what works well as a good undercoat is something that has like an oily film to it. You know, like um, with some lanolin in it, maybe. Well, Amsoil makes a product called um, Metal Protector. Yeah. And it's like yeah. this, like, you know, cosmoline, like that oily, waxy kind of stuff. Do you do that in the shop too? Like, we don't, no, we don't spray okay. it in the shop. We'd have to get big hoods and all this kind of stuff to yeah. do it on oh, regular an basis. Oh, EPO crap. Yeah, you yeah, don't want to get into that. that. Yeah. <laughs> You're just, we, yeah. Eventually, yeah. we may offer it as a service, uh, but we are out of space at this point. So, great. Let's get back into time. what you guys could do. I'm, I'm yeah. sorry to so, go down that do, road. Can, do you do engine? Engine modifications, things like uh, that? We do a lot of bolt-on accessories. So we're, you know, and that that's kind of a, a broad spectrum, but like... Lights? Cat back, sure, but like for exhaust, we, we do cat-back exhaust systems. We do cold air intakes. Yeah. We can do a What's supercharger. What's a good cold air intake? What's a good cat-back system? <laughs> oh, yeah, boost oh my that. gosh. I really <laughs> like, for exhaust, I really like Magnaflow. Uh-huh. Uh, I think they make great products. Yeah. Um, cold air intakes... Man, there's so many. Don't there's get, so many good don't get too hasty. I need. <laughs> there's a lot of companies. Don't get too hasty. Yeah, over there. don't be jumping around real quick. I need one that uh, that uh, sounds a little aggressive, but doesn't like my neighbors aren't going to kill me. Yeah, Magnaflow. Yeah, exhaust. Yeah, for sure. But the, is there a that, model that, that? Well, they've got a bunch of different ones depending on like if you want. Dual sides, you want single out. Oh, you we want, want dual, dual sides. We want dual out. Dual slash cut in front I got of the tire. Two, I got two outs, but I don't know how it goes. I don't know the the whole. You want like, so what, you like want dual side, on each like a side. double barrel or <laughs> one on each side. Yeah. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. Your bumper actually has. Yeah, I yeah, have but, two, yeah. but I don't know the the, the, the configuration, the configuration of, it, yeah. of it. Magnaflow so, makes a bunch of different options for those. Like they may have they have like a little resonator delete, so you could keep your factory pipes and just take out one. Yeah, they've got a muffler that bolts in they've got a whole cat back what do i need just i don't like cat you're saying a lot of things (laughs) what do i need uh you know it depends what you want to spend of course (laughs) just what do i i didn't yeah does he look it around (laughs) but it's not an option just just what do i need um I'll, I'll email you the part number tomorrow but magnaflow makes one that's a direct fit that works with your bumper cutouts and all that stuff yeah, Perfect. that's fine. there we go. Perfect. That's the one we Big need. Big diameter Unbolt. tubing, nice radius yeah, bend. Yeah. And my neighbors aren't gonna like beat me up and say, no, like, no, it's it. pretty mild. Yeah, as long as you leave all the factory resonators not and stuff in there, it'll still yeah. be better than those darn tires you had. Oh, well, I'm surprised <laughs> they didn't kick you guys out of this <laughs> development here over there. Well, HOA run you right on out. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so anyway, yeah, that's uh, something. Well, you might as well if you're forgetting the muffler, you got to get the intake. I mean, yeah, yeah. intake and programmer. I mean, that's kind of like the the trio there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, a cold air intake, a programmer, and an exhaust. Pick, you got all that. Where, uh-huh. where do you <laughs> start? <laughs> like, if you I were going to start with 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 one of those three, like, what what's going to get you the most? The programmer get get you the most bang for your buck. The nice thing with a programmer too is that you can calibrate your speedometer and that kind of stuff when you yeah. do bigger tires. Yeah. So oh, so yeah. the programmer's kind of nice to be able to. And each truck. I just run ways, and it. Tells <laughs> yeah, me how that's right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You look yeah. at that. Yeah. So programmers are probably nice. The intake's nice because then it gives you a filter that's cleanable, so you don't have to be changing this filter all the time. Yeah. You can clean it, which is yeah. pretty cool. Well, whose yeah. cold air intake do you like? Uh, I would say my favorite is a company called AFE. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Pick, do you like one too? Well, I like to AFE's check in good. with Pick every yeah. once in a while. <laughs> AFE is good. It's like like uh, he said, it's washable. It's, it has a lifetime warranty. I mean, you, it, motors are like air pumps. The more air yeah. you get in, the quicker air goes out, the more efficient, the more power. Um, it, it, it's just you know going to help with the life of the engine. So, What are um, you running, it, bud? I have K&Ns. K&N. I have yeah. K&N filters. Gotcha. You, know, you look like a K&N guy. <laughs> Another good one is a company called S and B. I was looking at one. I have an, an expedition with the EcoBoost engine. And I was looking at the cold air intakes, and it, it, does that mess up your your fat? Like I bought a one hundred and twenty five thousand mile warranty or something like that with it. Does you, that mess with you any of that? Had. No, <laughs> like, a lot of I these. Might've. I mean, a lot of these companies have 
dyno charts and in staff, you know, staff engineers. And I mean, they're not going to, they're not going to make something that's going to cause a problem. You got to bypass. There's too much liability on that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. They they put something out that. So I wouldn't need to like rip it off real quick and put the factory one back on before. (laughs) Before you take it back in. Yeah. Yeah. Oil change. Not that I would ever do that. Airbag recall or something. (laughs) Seatbelt recall. (laughs) Right. No, you're, you're good. You're good. Yeah. Uh, that's a, that's good. I've always wondered that. And never knew. And for and then you make a good point. You're not going to make something that's going to cause your engine to blow up. You know that yeah. would be kind of bad business. Yeah, and like we see this all the time in the aftermarket is that you know people are war- worried about ruining their factory warranty. Yeah. That you yeah. know they do some modification and now you know all bets are off. They take it to the dealer and not going to worry anything. Yeah. And, and you know that's a big misnomer because the 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 dealer has to prove that. The modification you made caused the failure. If right. it didn't, right. then they still have to honor the warranty. You know, yeah. the warranties are yeah. written at a corporate level. The bug shield you put on your yeah. <laughs> is not, did not cause your exhaust uh, to fall uh, off. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's, you know, that's a big thing. These. So these, what you're saying is a lot of times dealers try to scare people. I, I guess that's, that's what it Boy, seems Bucky, like. Boy, Bucky, you're all he about is, it. Yeah. You are Conspiracy. on tonight. Well, it seems like it is. But we work with a lot of dealers and, and modifying these trucks. Area 54 has like F-250s <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Sorry. You should okay. see it. <laughs> there are a few, you know, Chrysler and Ford. Yo, they're actually making their guys. own suspension lifts, no. suspension kits. No, or they source done them out. out or? Yeah. Okay. I mean, they're making their own kits. Yes. You can buy a Jeep. Right, and yeah. then buy a Mopar lift kit. Yes, yes, you can. Right, okay. You can't buy a Jeep from the factory with the Mopar lift kit installed from the factory, though. Okay. Did they just, we move off of tuners? We can get back on tuners. <laughs> we can get back. We're on, on tuners now. We're on lift the, kits. <laughs> but still, <laughs> you know, still, let's say you have a half ton V8 pickup truck, and you do intake, exhaust, and a programmer. Mm-hmm. You, yes, it's going to make it more efficient, and it's going to give you more power. But these are not like off the chart numbers really so you know you might spend a thousand bucks for a programmer an intake and exhaust and it might give you 15 horsepower or 20 horsepower so it's like yeah you you know you've got to really weigh whether or not that's worth 400 horsepower engine or 354 you're probably not you're not gonna notice that that much right but you know we're guys and we like to spend money on that stuff. Yeah, yeah. like you I pull this exhaust tuner. and it's like, <laughs> oh, that is cool. It sounds yeah. better. Yeah, you, you can hear the intake when you you know put in the passing lane. Yeah, and, yeah, <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. So I mean, one thing I like about the program, in addition to giving it power and calibrating the the tires, it, it will read a check engine code. So yeah. um, you know if your check engine light comes on, you you know you don't have to go to your dealer or down to your local auto parts store to have them come out. You can actually stick that thing in there, shows what the code is. There are many resources that you can go to to can see you clear what that some code codes. Is. You can yeah. clear oh, some I codes. I forgot yeah. to bring that tonight. You can you can I need one co- clear cleared. some codes. Yeah. yeah. I bought this cool thing on Amazon too that you can plug in your OBD2 port and then just use your phone. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. Was like, it was like a hundred bucks. Really? Yeah. yeah. It was like the, last, oh, the blue driver, I think. Oh, I need the last that. OBD2 scanner you'll ever buy. It was yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah, it was cool. What? That's awesome. Yeah. I, I need that. What Why? what problem do you have with the OBD2 uh, market, Buck? I don't. Bring it on. <laughs> more than I can take back. Yeah, more on us. Good for it. <laughs> they put the computers on, put us down. Give me more power. The to man. Talk to it. <laughs> Sorry. No, Sorry. We're good. Stevie brought that one. The up. man is a big fan of our show, Buck, and you're just beating on him tonight. <laughs> Sorry, I went full Buckman. <laughs> oh. So you know one thing I like. We were just talking about the Gladiator from Jeep, and we're giving mm-hmm. that a lot of praise. But a lot of the other manufacturers are coming out with some really sweet off-road vehicles, like Turnkey. You can buy the new Ford Raptor, which yeah, is just yes. unbelievable. It's nuts. Is a Bron- desert race machine. I heard about the Bronco coming out. Is that going to be off-roady kind yeah. of? Is that I more hope. of a grocery getter? I hope. I hope it's cool. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's it looks got- cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The <laughs> concepts look cool. I just hope Ford doesn't Love just like. Concepts. I'm with you. 
oh, here it is, and it's really like an, an edge or yeah. an escape. <laughs> it's you know? a, a yeah. little box it's here. A, it's uh, a truck on a vi- minivan. Like the Bronco chassis. too. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. like yeah. there was the old shoebox Bronco. Yes. You know, you can get it with the 302, yeah. and you can pull the top off, and they're just this iconic. Old school. And then the Bronco 2 came out, and everybody yeah. was like, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, yeah. you know. You can barely put two 12s in it, you know, for yeah. subwoofers. Yeah, so so I, I really like that Ford's got the Raptor. I think it's a cool truck. Dodge has the, or Ram, we'll call it, has the Power Wagon, yeah. which, Ooh, like, if yeah. you need a truck that's got locking differentials and a sway bar that can disconnect. If you need to gears, rip your house off the foundation. Yeah. It's got a 12,000-pound winch. Buried in the front bumper. <laughs> what? Yeah. Yeah. 35 inch tire stock. stock. 35 inch yeah. tires. They're yeah. just a cool truck. And so this is a stock truck. Stock off truck. The lock, off, off the lock. lock. Bucky, you found another bucket. one. You're. Yeah. No, Jeep <laughs> Gladiator's got my eye. The power wire. <laughs> that, I mean, they're different. But it's going to take a special lady to get <laughs> get my favor off of that. <laughs> and Toyota's got their, their um, both Tacoma Forerunner. And Tundra available in their TRD Pro line, mm. which comes with really nice shocks, Those reservoirs. Are such good looking trucks. Oh yeah. man, Did, yeah. are this, is that the ones that have the Fox shocks? Would you know that? Uh, they do. The Fox. Yeah, yeah they do. They do yeah. come with Fox. I did see that. So they're awesome. Yeah. They use Fox they in a lot of stuff. Yeah. What sound yeah. do those Fox so- shocks make? <laughs> <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, you know, uh, I, I hate to do this. Mike, guys. we're, we're uh-huh. bumping up on time. This is dangerous. I, I know. That I, I just looked at the clock, and Will and I looked at we each other. We didn't even talk anymore. I'm glad we got a hunting story. We, yet. We've got to do the fast five. Okay. So the fast five is five questions. Five. Five of them. It's just five. And they're fast. And they're fast. We ask Sometimes. them quickly. Sometimes. And you just answer the first question that comes to mind. Right. Yes. Gotcha. Don't yes. keep on answering the first question. Yeah. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> and there's no wrong answers. But we'll tell you if they're wrong. Yeah. We'll be the first okay. one. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. A little intimidated, but here we go. That's all right. They've been in front of you all night, but I, I see that now. Yeah. yeah. What's one thing you can't live without? Hey, eyes over here, young man. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, my god! We'll say, we normally ask what's one thing you can't live without in the outdoors, but we could also rephrase that to what's one thing you can't live without at Mount Zion off-road. Hmm. So when it comes to that. vehicles, you know, I think you, we could answer this question two ways. Outdoors in your truck and just being outdoors, I think what you have on your feet is huge, and what you have on your truck's feet is huge. So yeah. oh, boots. telling me. And, and tires, tires man. That's, tires. that's where it's at. Boots and, boots and, tires. and tires. Boots and tires. Perfect. Boots and tires. So I, boots I, and tires. Oh, Bucky. You know, like a good boot it's that keeps far. your foot dry. I spend a lot of time hiking. I've got two yeah. four-year-old girls. We, yeah. you, we enjoy spending time outdoors. Yeah. And good shoes is where it's at. And good shoes on your rig is where it's at. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Right? Cool. Uh, here, here. Great answer. Yep. That is the truth. What's your favorite movie? Oh, gosh. Man, I'm not a huge movie guy. Um, <laughs> Fury Road. Uh, so you know what's funny is I, 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 I hear that question, and this re- just reminds me of a little thing when my brother and I were young that he got interviewed, and they asked him the same question, and he said, uh, my favorite movie is Waterworld. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was like, all right, Waterworld. Yeah. He was probably like, Six at the time. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. So I just sense. saw it the I'm week I'm going to say Waterworld. <laughs> <laughs> That's for an, old time's oh. sake. It's an absolute You first. know what? You're a good brother, Mike. What's your brother's name? Steven. Steven? He is the absolute hunter, man. Oh, my gosh. St- Steven, you owe your brother Mike. Big time. <laughs> Big time for that answer. Because that's world. probably the worst answer for that question we've ever <laughs> One had. of the worst movies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you totally took one for the yeah. family. Yeah. Good, uh, Mike. You're... Escape from L.A. or something. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Saw it. Mm. I actually asked him to go jeeping with me on Saturday. He's like, you know the rut's going on, right? I was yeah. like, good oh, on him. Right. Good, right. Right. good on you, Steven. <laughs> good on you. Mike, what's the one thing that you do daily to prepare for the outdoors, for your outdoor lifestyle? Sure. Boy, that's a good question. I think eating right and just living a healthy life. You know, if you, if you just can't be healthy to get out and hike, 
yeah. that's a big thing. So eating mm. right, exercising. I like to trail run. Yeah. So, you know. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Good that's on cool. you. What do you yeah. do in the winter? I Very snowboard. Sweet. So I've got, I'm, I'm going to be trying to teach my girls how to snowboard. Oh, that's we cool. started them last year. Did you? Uh, I hear it's harder than it really looks. That's you know, more, you got to commit. It's not skiing. You got to commit. You got to like buy all the stuff and say, you know what, I'm going to do this. Yeah. Because it's going to suck for the first five times you yeah. Have you skied before? I did. I grew up skiing. You might be Ooh. exclusively a, a person that can uniquely answer this question. I've got some knee issues. Yep. That are starting to really get me worried. I know snowboarding might be less stress on my knees. I'm not ready to hang it up, but like, it's not like skiing. And, and is it, am I too old to start trying to snowboard? Oh, man. The hard part is for me on my knees when I snowboard is that when you take one foot out of the binding, you know, if you're like moving in the lift line. Yeah. You've got one foot horizontal and yeah. one foot vertical, and that just really twists your knee weird. Mm -hmm. And then oh, the yeah. snowboard's hanging off of one leg, kind of twisted weird. I'll uh, just ski until I'm done then. But, <laughs> but you know, my dad is 65, and he started snowboarding when he was 50. There you I go, Tom. Wow. So and he tears it you. up. He broke a leg you. snowboarding, and he still oh, tears it up. Oh, bless his heart. <laughs> With a broken leg? Not no. uh, not anymore. He <laughs> broke it. He broke it snowboarding oh. out west. Wow. Yep. Wow. You've heard your answer then. Yeah. You've heard. You, I might try. I might try. Do it. This year. Yeah. Do it. But commit. I will. I, I'm you, not man. afraid of commitment. I love that. Like Half that. a dozen times. Yeah. And get lessons. Understand the the mechanics of edge control yeah. and controlling speed with edge. Absolutely. And once you understand that, just like skiing, you're using edges to control yourself. Yeah. Snowboarding is the same. Yep. Yeah. I'm all about that. Yeah. Do it. All right. N next question, Mike. I'm going to throw this one a little curveball, and I, I assume that you've been off-roading in our discussion. What is your no, bucket? No, not at all. <laughs> what is the your bucket list location for off-roading? So uh, I, I've been there, and already typically it's it's <laughs> Moab, Utah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, the the next spot I really want to do is the Rubicon Trail yeah. in Northern California. Yeah, and that you have not done the Rubicon. I have not right? done the Rubicon. Yeah. yeah. Nope, I've not done it. Uh, there's just so much to explore out west. Two years ago, we did a trip from Salt Lake to L.A., and we oh. hit five national parks in wow. a week. Wow. Jo you know, just... Yosemite, well, Tahoe. No, so this is Southern Utah, so we did oh. um, Bryce Canyon. Canyon Kai um, We did... Um, yeah, all those uh, in the sun. Yeah, <laughs> gosh. Yeah. So Bryce Canyon, Capitol Reef. We did the Grand Canyon. We did Joshua Tree in L.A. Man, I, oh, I wow. love Southern yeah. Utah. Hmm. So yeah. I love Utah. Period. It sounds yes. like Southern Utah is like off-road anything. Yeah, like, like bikes, mount, right, mountain biking, hiking, hiking base jumping, jeeps. whatever you're into. <laughs> yeah. Skiing. Yeah, Zane's northern Utah. Out there. Yeah, we're going in February. I'm I'm pumped about cool. that. Yeah, I'll be, you'll be there right before me. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully, we bought our girls these like little um, backpacks that we can control where they go. <laughs> that is Hopefully, cool. that goes well. They've been. They started <laughs> last year on the magic carpet. You know. Hey, and, can we keep that hush hush? Will might buy some for some of us at the outdoor <laughs> show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bucky is, is cruising for a backpack. <laughs> yeah. 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 I need to get. <laughs> All right. All right, Mike. Last question in the Fast Five. My what, favorite one. What makes you happy? Oh, man. That's 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 the toughest question in it's life. Why it's my favorite one. Yeah. Um, for me, trusting in the Lord, right, in Jesus Christ as my Savior mm -hmm. brings joy to me. That's awesome. And sharing that with other people and, and showing mercy where mercy is due. And grace where it's owed, yeah. you know, because that's that's exactly what you know. I was listening to a pastor this morning, just about the heart of Jesus being to love. And if you can't do anything else, if you that's can love it. people, yeah, that's love. where it's at. So love people that don't deserve it gives me joy. Can we quit that's asking awesome. this question because that's probably the best answer we'll ever hear? Mic drop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's no. it. That's well, it. You're gonna hurt I'm, him if you I'm do tearing that. up over here, oh, yeah. bud. I. I Thank you for that. Sure. Yeah. Thank you That's for that. That's what it's about. Yeah. That's, That's what it's it. about. Making awesome. Bucky cry. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you did it, bud. You, I do it to people. <laughs> but Mike, this was a lot of fun. And I enjoyed oh, it. Absolutely. 
yeah, this, could you, in closing, run down people through where they can find you, give you your address, phone number, yeah. website, YouTube, all that good stuff so that anyone wants to contact you, they Yeah, got first it. and foremost, do it on Google, right? Mount Zion Off-Road. Google us, Mount Zion Off-Road. Yeah. From there, you can look us up on the gram, on Instagram, yeah, at Mount Zion yeah. Off-Road. <laughs> Love that. Check it out on Facebook. Uh, we've been doing two videos a week on YouTube. Yeah. So, well, like, stuff that happens I'm totally shop. loving those videos. I can't even tell you. They're just, it's very, like, clean and polished. But, like, I know you're getting in there and getting dirty. And you guys are really just killing it. Yeah, so, we're, yeah. we're showing kind of the behind the scenes. I'm excited about our YouTube channel. There's one thing that, that I've thought about and talked about and, you know, just and never did it. And the opportunity came. We brought a full-time guy on to edit and to shoot. I and, wanted to talk about that well, because that's a big deal. It's like that is he, huge. And you should see his system. Like, he's got this, like... We call it the spaceship. Uh, yeah, exactly. The screen is, like, 49 inches curved. Yeah. Oh, wow. wow. That's awesome. But by doing that, what you guys are doing is cutting those windows in, like, at the uh, car washes when I was a kid, where we could watch the process. Yeah. Yeah. The process go on. Yeah. And that is so cool. Keep that up. Take it on your Rubicon trip. Do yes. Th- like, film that, that process. You are letting people in, and people always want to look into past that wall that they can't see through right to see what's going on what are they actually doing how does it and and it, again to tie back into what will was saying earlier in the show the staff want to share that it's again you're you're going to be putting the pictures to the words everything fits together that's the best part yeah yeah, you know, yeah. Just, people want the behind the scenes yeah. like what's yeah. up on the lift yeah you know like yeah. why why are you doing this if i didn't see all the lifted vehicles and things like that i never would have came to your shop i mm-hmm. never would have drove it's a little bit of a hike oh, for yeah. me to get to your shop there's a lot of other places to work on oh my, my truck gosh, yeah. in between here and in there to know that you have that specialty and that expertise and, and and again you were able to convey some of that to me because i'm not i'll buy it but i don't know what you're doing sure you know what I mean? And Honestly. after after speaking with Mike, I think you went to the right place. Yeah. You absolutely did. Well, yeah. I I'm glad you decided to come on a show and, and, and kind of but yeah, we found something. You know, yeah. you get like <laughs> there's so much passion in off roading. There's so much passion in people's vehicles. Yeah. Just your day to day. Everybody wants I'm to I'm not a car guy and it, I totally got into this. For some reason. Yeah. I have a, a lifted ram and where I work. I'm the truck guy, you know what right. I mean? And it's just, and pretty much it's a commuter kind of just averagey kind of thing for lifted trucks, as far right. as lifted trucks go. Yeah, right. A six inch and 35s is pretty standard. Yeah. Is yours a 1500? 1500. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I assume, what you have, or a four inch, either one, but yeah. Yeah, six inch lifts with, yeah, 35s. you know, and 35s. And, uh, Again, very kind of just a standard deal. But, like, at the hospital, I'm the truck guy or I'm the outdoor guy. Okay. And it's, like, you know, it's kind of funny. But having, again, having your expertise, it was a no-brainer for me. And it, you guys solidified it. And then you making the trip up here and being in the studio. Just, yeah, I wanted yeah. to be here. Like, great. I wanted awesome. to hang out with you guys. I'm glad you did. We about. love when guests come here. Yeah. yeah. It's just so much more organic and easier to communicate. Yeah. And, you know, you just get that vibe well, from you one can, another. You can make the nonverbals, too. And sure. that's what the guy, unfortunately, the guests can't get a hold of, you know, with this. And yep. what, what about a phone number, real quick? Yeah, sure. It's 717 308 1844. Very cool. Cool. Contact Mount Zion off road. All right. Boom. Mike, thanks again. This was thanks, yeah, was I enjoyed it. It was a, it was a time. pleasure. Our pleasure. Yeah. Our pleasure. I really enjoyed it. All right, guys. Before we kick it off, let's ask We Ryan. need to visit Ryan one yeah, more time. We need to visit Ryan one more time to tell us about this month's closing sponsor. Ryan. This month's episodes are brought to you in part by Protection First Class Outdoors. PFC Lubes were designed and developed to protect and lubricate your firearms, your bows, your tree stands, heck, all your outdoor equipment. Guys, I'm telling you, this stuff was originally designed to use in automotive undercoatings. Now, don't get more corrosive than that. I heard that. That's true. Make sure you head on over to pfcoutdoors.com. Check out everything they got going on over there. Pick up some of that lube. It's the ticket. You going to kick this pig? Yeah, I'm going to. Hey, Mike, before we kick this pig, I just want to 
ask you, do you, do you and the guys like to wake up with a little bit of coffee in your cup in the morning? You better believe it. All right. Man, nothing smells better than nice coffee brewing uh, in the office mm, at the shop. Mm, I love some oh, yeah. coffees. Yeah. Mm. We got uh, compliments of our from our good friends over at Duck Blind Coffee. We're going to give you guys some first flight. It's one of our favorite things, something we wake up to every morning. Migrate on over to a better cup, bud. Man, that mm. sounds awesome. Oh, the guys it, are going to love it, it for sure. It's great. We appreciate that. Hey, Pick. Hey, Bucky. Where can people find us? They can find us on the World Wide Web at Rutten River Pursuits. Make sure you check us out on all your social media outlets, such as Instagram, Facebook, and the Twitters. And Twitter. don't forget to check the YouTubes at Rutten River Pursuits Podcast. Podcast. Great episode again, Mike. Thanks for joining us. Get you some Mountain tires. Off road. Yes, get you some tires. Mm. Get you some cool intakes <laughs> <laughs> and differentials. Yeah, yeah, I had a blast being here, guys. I thank you so much thank for you, uh, sitting around the table and talking about trucks and hunting, and it's been a great time. I actually learned a ton about trucks and aftermarket accessories and how to uh, all know. right we're gonna yeah. wrap up a show <laughs> thanks a lot Thank you, <laughs> Bye. 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 get outdoors Bruce. Bruce. we bought our girls these like little um backpacks that we can control where they go <laughs> That is Hopefully cool. that goes well. They've been they started last year on the magic carpet, you know. Hey, and can we keep that hush hush? Will might buy some for some of us at the outdoor <laughs> show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Buffy is, is cruising for a backpack. Yep. Yeah. A lot of people throw on just full out mud tires because they look awesome. Yes. And it. then go to the mall yeah. and, and never, ever use yeah. them in the dirt. Yeah. And it's just, a, you know, it's like. I get a lot of looks <clears throat> from the dude. cart boy at Giant. No way. <laughs> like right. He loves it. Yeah. Right. He's like, gives me a thumbs up. And I'm, yeah, so, bud, you know it. Wasn't that what Daisy Duke drove? No, she drove a CJ7. Oh, okay, that was like CJ. that was okay, the yeah. real American. Okay, that was okay. the Golden Eagle edition, right. like the white oh, with the gold. Yeah. yeah, yep. I know my Daisy Duke vehicle. <laughs> Darn right. <laughs> so-